Hi, it's Steph, and we're at Home Depot. I needed some topsoil, so I thought while I was here, I'd take a look around and see if they have anything new. This holly caught my eye. This is a false holly goshiki. Osmanthus and I had bought one of these at Lowe's last year when they had their um, holiday containers and mine got really wind burned and it didn't look like it was hardy for our zone. Looking here it says it has a zero degree hardiness but this summer I went to a friend's garden tour and she had two of these shrubs that were absolutely gorgeous so I'm actually considering giving this another try and maybe planting it on the south side of my house where it is warmer maybe even by the foundation somewhere because look how beautiful this is. So this is um, false holly goshiki. It says it blooms uh, summer through fall. I'm guessing that the bloom is very insignificant. That's typically what happens with these hollies and like boxwoods. <clears throat> it's barely noticeable, just like a little white button of sorts. Space, it needs three to five feet. Hardy does zero degrees weekly watering uh, more often until roots are established and this appears to be just about a one gallon container um, this is 3.78 liters but it's comparable to say just about a one gallon and it's 1698 here is the beautiful quick fire hydrangea but this is the dwarf version or the petite shrub version this is the little quick fire panicle hydrangea by proven winners where the regular quick fire hydrangea gets to be six to eight feet tall and wide this one only gets to be three to five tall and wide so a lot better in terms of fitting it into the landscape if you have a smaller yard or you just want a more petite shrub it is hardy in usda zones three through eight or to negative 40 degrees in it likes sun or part shade and look at all of the beautiful color variation that you get in this shrub they start off with a creamy white bloom and then they start getting this gorgeous rosy pink. Absolutely beautiful. A really nice panicle hydrangea. And this little quick fire here at the Home Depot is $29.98. And this is about a two gallon container. In one of my recent tours, someone mentioned that they really liked this little princess spirea, and I just came across some, and it's actually still in bloom, so it might be a little bit later bloom. In my experience, spirea typically blooms in the spring in my garden, so let's take a look. So this is spirea little princess. It's a full sun shrub. It says it's deer resistant and it blooms early to late summer. So this appears to be a summer blooming spirea. And the container here is a number three for $24.98. And it's just green foliage. I'm not sure if it changes with the fall, um, but it's possible. I'm not familiar with this particular spirea, but the new growth appears to be a reddish color, as we can see here. And the blooms are really pretty. They're a magenta color. Beautiful fern. They've had this fern here for a few weeks now. It's the Autumn Beauty Fern. And this container is a number three for $19.98. And look at that, Autumn, Brill Autumn Fern Brilliance. So it's not Autumn Beauty, it's Autumn Fern Brilliance. But look at the gorgeous colors on that so pretty. It gets to be 8 to 24 inches high and it's 8 to 24 inch spacing, hardy to negative 20 degrees and weekly water or more often until the roots establish. But what I really loved is the color variation. It has greens and oranges. It looks like it would be a beautiful fern to transition into fall. And this is a shade perennial. Really pretty. Here's this a still be here that looks like it's finished blooming now, but it has these really cool dark stems and um, a mix of like darker foliage. Just really pretty. Even the foliage and the stems have a lot of interest and would be beautiful as we approach the fall. It looks like the blooms would be a light pink color. 
The name is a Stilby Delft Lace. It is a shade perennial and it gets to be 24 to 36 inches tall. It blooms early to midsummer, hardy to negative 20 degrees. And this container is also a three gallon for $19.98. This evergreen here is called a Juniper Parsoni, and it already has berries on it, which is really interesting. So this needs a four to six inch, four to six foot spacing, hardy to negative 30 degrees. And look at the berries. How cool. This is a great time to start planting some evergreens to do some fall plantings because they will give you so much winter interest, especially if you're in an area that gets winters, um, you know, four seasons and you get some snow. Look at those berries. I'm trying to see how much these are. Let's check it out. $26.98 for a three gallon. Some boxwood Calgary and it looks like this is one of the more compact forms of boxwood. So this one gets to be 18 to 24 inches, hardy to negative 30 degrees, and it says water two to three times per week until established. The lighting says full sun. It says it's deer resistant, which is great, and it's an evergreen. This one is in a number three container for $34.98. Here's another great shrub to plant in the fall so that you can get some late winter early spring blooms it is a pyrus japanese pyrus cavatine pyrus japonica this is a evergreen shrub it blooms this particular one says it blooms mid to late spring some varieties bloom late winter early spring and it needs 36 to 48 inches and it's hardy to negative 10 degrees and look at the new foliage. It's such a beautiful color when the new leaves emerge. Looks like this one blooms sort of yellow, a creamy color. And this one is a number three container for $29.98. From Green Giant, this is the Arborvitae Green Giant. It's a full sun evergreen. And this one is more deer resistant than some of the other Arborvitaes. This is a number seven container for $59.98 and it needs 12 foot spacing, hardy to negative 20 degrees and maintain moderately moist soil. These knockout roses that they had all marked down 50% off in July have now rebounded with a fresh flush of new growth. They're looking really healthy. They're also no longer on sale. <laughs> and so um, here you go. If you wanted to plant some roses in the fall, you could do that as well. These I have in my garden. I have knockouts. I have the double pink version. These appear to be red. They are really hardy rose for myself. Um, they do really great in my garden. And they're the only ones that I don't struggle with too much. They might still get, you know, some uh, sawtooth larvae on them or a couple of Japanese beetles, but certainly not anywhere near the amount of trouble that my uh, English roses give me. So these are some pretty good sized containers. These are the number three for $26.98. Some proven winners, Nefofia. This one is called Hot and Cold. It's a full sun perennial, 30 to 36 inches tall hardy in zones 5b through 9 or negative 15 degrees and it blooms early to midsummer. This is a number three container for $24.98 and look at these beautiful blooms. Really pretty. Even when this plant isn't in bloom you still get a lot of texture and interest from this grassy foliage. But the blooms are definitely a bonus. Here is some Proven Winners number three container of Allium for $24.98. Now this Allium is different than the Allium that you plant in the fall. When you plant Allium in the fall, typically you plant bulbs and those will bloom for you in the spring where this type of perennial Allium is a summer bloomer. And it's a really pretty, 
purple pom-pom type flower. This is still tightly budded, but it's getting ready to open up. And when it's not in bloom, you get this beautiful strappy grassy texture in a clump. And what's great about this is it's very hardy with uh, animals. Pests don't bother this because it's part of the onion family. So you won't get any bunnies or deer munching on this plant. In fact, when you get real close to it, you can kind of get a little bit of an onion scent. Really great perennial. Pollinator magnet. Anemone. This is a really great late summer, early fall bloomer. This particular one has a small pink bloom and lots of buds getting ready to open up. And this is a number three container for $19.98. And right beside it is some peach hookara, also number three at 1998, in a great foliage accent. So you grow this for the foliage, but it will send out some bloom spikes at some point in late spring, early summer. Some people like them and leave them up, and some people cut them off. But if you're considering getting some plants for the fall, this might be a good one, because then you can plant it out in your landscape because it's perennial, where mums are kind of short-lived. Some bird's nest spruce. It's a really nice low evergreen. It kind of opens up and becomes like a low, almost look like it has stacked branches, but they can get pretty good size. These, I believe, get around six feet. They are deer resistant, low maintenance, because you don't have to trim them and they maintain that pretty round, sort of mounded shape. Yep, six feet spacing, hardy to negative 40 degrees. And it is a full sun evergreen. This container here is just about a one gallon and it is $14.98. Inside now, getting some shade inside the garden center and let's see what they have here in the shade section. Look at these really cool ferns. I absolutely love ferns. So this one is called Japanese Painted Fern Regal Red. For $10.98, this is the Vigoro brand. This is a shade perennial. And let's see how big it gets. It's about 18 inches high. It needs 12 to 18 inch spacing. It's hardy to negative 40 degrees. But look at this foliage. It is so beautiful. It has like a red, almost like a red colored veining down the center and it has like a silvery look to it. Really pretty. And look at the contrast with this red hookara or coral bells right behind, right beside it. Beautiful. Which variety is this? Let's see. So this is the Coral Bells Carnival Rose Granita. And it's, it looks like it's a cross hookara and velosa. It is 1098. It's a part sun perennial. Let's see how big it gets. So this one blooms early to late spring. And the blooms look like this. Yeah, these stalks like that. They're really tiny. You can either leave them or cut them off, similar to what people do with hosta. And it gets to be 10 to 12 inches in height and it needs 14 to 16 inch spacing, hardy to negative 30 degrees. Really pretty foliage. It almost, this one here almost has an appearance of looking like the silver gumdrop by Proven Winners. <clears throat> yeah. Pretty. Wait till you see this beautiful bloom on this hollyhock. This one is called Spring Celebrities Purple. It gets 36 inches high, needs 20 inch spacing, water when dry, hardy to negative 10 degrees, and blooms early to late summer. And it is a full sun perennial. This is their house brand plant at $8.98. And look at this bloom. Gorgeous. Almost looks like a dahlia. Really beautiful. Some beautiful bee balm. The smell on these is amazing. This one is called Bee Mine Bee Balm. It's $8.98. It's a full sun perennial. 15 to 18 inches high, needs 18 to 20 inch spacing, water when dry, 
hardy to negative 30 degrees and blooms late spring through summer. Now here's a perennial that I saw a few weeks ago when we did the um, Combo Lowe's and Home Depot garden tour. I can link that here in case you want to check it out. But this um, Silver Mound Artemisia, it was something that I was kind of interested in for the color and texture. And, um, you know, it's just grown for really, it kind of looks like a ground cover, but th I would certainly say that this is grown for the, um, the foliage. And so this one is a foliage plant. It is um, exposure plant and sun or partial sun and grows 10 inches tall, space 15 inches apart. But I'm glad that now I am looking at it and just kind of checking out the growth habit of it. And if you grow this in your garden, comment below. But you see how it kind of splits in the middle and then it just kind of looks woody? I would not be happy if I planted this in my garden and this started happening if we got some rain or if it was watered from up above. Um, so this is something that's kind of good to observe. Sometimes we're inclined to just purchase the plant right away when we see it at the garden center for fear that they'll run out. Um, but if you can execute a little bit of resistance, it's good to sometimes come back and check in and see how things are faring in the garden center because depending how they're doing there could be a good indicator of how they'll fare in your own garden. And this is, um, let's see how much it is. It's $14.98. It's a beautiful cone flowers. And these are their <clears throat> large containers. They are a full sun perennial. This is the Pow Wow Wildberry. I have this in my garden, it's beautiful. Even when it fades, it's a really, really pretty color of a faded like pinky purple. So this one gets to be 20 to 24 inches tall. It needs 16 to 18 inch spacing, water when dry, hardy to negative 40 degrees, and it blooms mid-summer through fall. So this is wonderful for your late summer garden. You can even leave these cones up once they're done blooming to provide food for birds and wildlife. The goldfinches love these seeds. And even just for some structure in your garden over the winter months, just to have the seed heads up. Really pretty. Some verbena. This is a pollinator magnet as well. Um, I've grown verbena in my garden before. It Once it drops seed, it does have a tendency to become invasive. I mean, they're pretty easy to pull up. If you don't mind it spreading, then this, you know, it would be a good plant for you to have. It blooms late spring to mid fall, gets 24 inches tall, needs 18 to 24 inch spacing, hardy to zero degrees, full sun. This is also in that uh, 1498 larger container. And look how pretty that looks with the cone flower. Purple and pink is a gorgeous garden combination. One of my favorites. They also have the Pow Wow White Coneflower. Look at these. So beautiful. The bees are all over these. So this one is uh, Coneflower Pow Wow White. They're a full sun perennial. They get to be 20 to 24 inches high, need 16 to 18 inch spacing, negative 40 degree hardiness, midsummer through fall bloom time. And uh, yeah, 1498. This is the larger containers as well. Here is a phlox with some variegated foliage. This one is called Garden Phlox Norley. It gets to be 30 to 36 inches high, needs 24 inch spacing, water when dry hardy to negative 30 degrees and blooms mid to late summer. Looks like it has a light pink with a rosy pink center. It's a full sun perennial. This one's 898. Look at that foliage. Here's an ornamental grass that packs some punch. This is the zebra grass Sabrinus. And it's a fairly large grass with this striping, which is probably where it gets its zebra name. Here is the tag. It's a full sun perennial grass. This container is $16.98. It's clumping and it blooms early to late fall and blooms on grasses means when it sends up their plumes. It is six to eight feet tall. It needs 48 inch spacing, 
party to negative 30 degrees. And it says water weekly or more often until the uh, roots are established. Really pretty grass. Side of it seems to be a dwarf version. This one is called Maiden Grass Little Zebra, and it's also a full sun perennial grass, clumping, deer resistant, $16.98. And let's see here. <clears throat> and this one blooms late summer to fall, gets 42 inches tall and 24 by 36 inches spacing, hardy to negative 20 degrees. And this one also has that striping effect, although it's not as pronounced as it is on the larger version, which is right beside it. Stone crop, another wonderful late summer, early fall bloomer. This one is called Autumn Joy, but just look at the size of this foliage. Beautiful. This is in their larger container. It is a full sun perennial. It is $14.98. Sedum Autumn Joy. Gets 16 to 24 inches tall. Needs 15 to 18 inch spacing. Water when dry. So uh, Sedum is almost like a succulent. They don't need a lot of water. And they are hardy to negative 40 degrees and blooms early summer through fall. Every stage of this plant is really beautiful really great perennial. In fact, it's one of my top five perennials and I made a video about favorite perennials recently that I can link here. Cayenne Spirit is another wonderful cone flower or echinacea. In one plant, you can get multiple colors of blooms. You can get this beautiful coral pink, an orange shade like you see back there, yellow, and even some shades of cream. Really beautiful. So if you wanted a multi-color or multi-interest coneflower, this is a good option. It is a full sun perennial. This container is $14.98. It's called Cayenne Spirit. And it gets to be 18 to 30 inches high. Needs 10 to 18 inch spacing. Water when dry hardy to negative 30 degrees and blooms midsummer through fall. Here's something I've never seen at my Home Depot. It's the Proven Winners Cat's Pajamas Nepeta. So this is the Proven Winners Nepeta or Cat Mint that is more compact. So this one blooms for a really long time. It actually starts at some point in mid to late spring and after you shear it through or deadhead it mid, you know, mid summer, you're getting a second flush of blooms. The second isn't usually as prolific as the first, but you're still getting more blooms. So really long blooming perennial. It's full sun, it's 12 to 14 inches tall. And the difference between this one and say the traditional Nepeta that, you know, has been around for a really long time, the Walker's Low, is the Walker's Low tends to get really um, taller. It gets taller and sometimes it can have the tendency to open up in the center. So these here are more compact. The height is 12 to 14 inches, needs 18 inch spacing, hardy in zones three through eight or to negative 40 degrees, and it blooms late spring into early fall. And like I said, if you deadhead it midway through the summer, that's when you'll get your second flush, which will carry you through early fall. And it is a full sun. Proven Winners Cat's Pajamas. And these are $12.98. So here's my haul for today. I'm going to pick up two bags of this Scott's Topsoil. And I decided on one of these false holly goshiki, osmanthus evergreen shrubs. I think it'll be really pretty. I'm going to try to find a good spot for it. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you've enjoyed this tour and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the thumbs up button and please subscribe so you don't miss any of my future videos and we'll see you soon.